All right, our next step into the brain is going to be the forebrain and its structures and functions. So let's begin with the diencephalon. So this is part of the forebrain that includes the epithalamus, the thalamus, hypothalamus, part of the pituitary gland, and the third ventricle. And so this is surrounded by the cerebral hemisphere. And so the thalamus, which what we have right here, is going to be a, a paired masses of gray matter, and they are important for promoting arousal from sleep and alertness. And so this is the relay center for all sensory information except for smell. Everything but smell is going to go through the thalamus. All right, then next what we have is the epithalamus, which we find here on the backside and which would be attached with the pineal gland. And this contains the choroid plexus over the third ventricle where the cerebral spinal fluid is produced. So we have about 20,000 clock cells with activity that oscillate every 24 hours, and so that's what gives rise to our circadian rhythms, okay? And next we have the hypothalamus, and so that's going to be that stalk here that connects the thalamus to the pituitary gland. Where the hypothalamus is important for maintaining homeostasis, such as like with hunger and satiety and thirst, regulation of body temperature, regulation of sleep and wakefulness, sexual arousal and performance, emotions of fear, anger, pain, and pleasure. So all are going to be controlled by the hypothalamus where we have a majority of our hormones that are also produced there. All right, and then lastly, the pituitary gland, which I'm gonna circle right here. This is where we have uh, production of different hormones as well, and they're going to be influenced by the hypothalamus. So this is considered to be the control of the endocrine system, and it controls hormone secretions um, that will or regulate through our bloodstream. The next one we have is the midbrain. And so the corpora quadrigemina has two different features. All right, so let's look at here is the thalamus, okay, and then pineal gland. So this is on the posterior aspect, what we're looking at. Okay, so the first one, the superior colliculus, this is where we have visual reflexes that will have neurons projecting through here. And then the inferior colliculus, which will have now auditory reflexes that will project accents here and then later go on into the temporal lobe. Also, what we find within the midbrain are these fiber tracts of ascending and descending tracts or axons. And so these are the cerebral peduncles and the midbrain. And what they look like are like cupcake liners. And another important aspect of the midbrain is that this is also going to serve as the connection between the cerebrum and the cerebellum. And so it is involved with motor coordination as well. All right, and next what we have is the pons, which in this figure is right here. And it's going to be like this olive shaped structure to it. And this is where we have a lot of sensory and motor tracts that are going to and from the spinal cord. And also where a lot of our cranial nerves are going to arise from, such as the trigeminal, abducens, facial, and vestibular cochlear nerves. So there's two important centers that we find. We have the apneustic center and the pneumotaxic center, and these are both involved in breathing. Where we have the apneustic center, this is important for inspiration. And we'll cover more of this in um, respiratory physiology. Pneumotaxic center, this is going to inhibit, I'm gonna say decrease inspiration. And so this is then involved in the re or respiration, okay? And so very important for that. All right, and then um, another last feature of the pons is that we have fiber tracks that are going to connect the cerebellum with the um, pons so that we can have information going from the cerebellum up into the cerebral cortex. So the cerebellum, again, this is on the posterior uh, portion below the occipital lobe. This receives input from proprioceptors in our joints, tendons, and muscles. 
and it's the second largest brain structure that we have. So it has gray matter on the outside and white matter on the inside, so very similar to that of the cerebral cortex. It has many roles too, um, including working with the basal nuclei in motor cortex to coordinate movement. And it has different roles too in sensory data, memory, emotion, and other higher functions, but most of which it's been associated with the coordination of fine movements. And so we have information that goes from the cerebellum, then it goes to the thalamus, and then to the motor cortex. So the cerebellum will influence motor coordination through inhibition of the motor cortex um, through different types of Purkinje fibers. And so this allows for then proper timing and force to move limbs. If we didn't have this feature, if we didn't have a cerebellum, we would have very jerky reactions and then they might be also delayed. Um, and also in terms of force, we know that when we write with a pen, we don't have to hit the paper very hard. Now, with children, this is in like toddlers, I'm specifying, um, this is not the case as they're trying to figure that out. So like right now, my son, who is under two years old, as he's trying to write, he's hitting the pencil on the paper very hard because he hasn't developed that proper force yet to move that pen along with on that paper. So with the medulla oblongata, this is the last feature of, or last structure of the brain before we enter the spinal cord. And so it's the most inferior portion. And so this is where we have all ascending and descending tracks between the brain and spinal cord that are going, going to go through the medulla oblongata. And so we'll also have crossing of sides uh, that are called pyramids. So that this helps with um, that, uh, where the left side is going to control the right side of the body and vice versa. All right, so just like the pons, this also has cranial nerves that are going to come off of it. And so um, we'll have cranial nerves number 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So the last five are stemming off of the medulla. So the neurons that are found within the medulla are important for respiration, where it's going to work with the pons in terms of monitoring that. Then we'll have monitoring of blood pressure due to different chemoreceptors. Uh, the medulla has cells that are involved in heart rate and force of contraction, as well as reflexes such as swallowing, coughing, and vomiting.